Hello everyone. So today let us talk about uh, Bitbucket and uh, like my other videos I will actually talk about and share and uh, show you something really interesting. So I, I don't really talk a lot about Bitbucket because uh, I use it and uh, I use it a lot for my own personal work and uh, it is not very difficult to use uh, with Jira. I mean I've shown uh, smart commits, workflow triggers many times in my videos. But today I was doing something very simple and I thought I'll probably share it with all of you. And uh, this is something which is, uh, uh, I'm sure a lot of you might want to do or maybe you're already doing it or maybe you are thinking of doing it. Now, I uh, just to give, give you some background, of course I, if you know me, I'm an Atlassian consultant, I do consultation around Atlassian tools and I have been doing it for many years but I also used to and I still I used to basically do Drupal development although I don't really do Drupal development a lot these days uh, because I do have some old projects that are still running um, but I do work on uh, Drupal this is something that I do now when it comes to Drupal Drupal is all about website web portals and uh, I do also have some simple websites, pure HTML based websites, which I uh, moved, which I made. Basically, I converted some of my Drupal sites to simple pure HTML based websites. And uh, I believe on this channel or maybe on my other channel, Blackberry Boy, I did share how to host your static websites on uh, GitLab for free. So yes, you can do that on GitLab. You can actually configure a pipeline and uh, it comes with a template. And by the way, you can also do, uh, you can also host a website on Bitbucket, but Bitbucket, Bitbucket has some limitations. I think you can't really configure your own custom domain if you, if I if I remember correctly. And I did show you, I think uh, in one of my video, how to use Bitbucket to host a website. But this video is not really about hosting a website, but I will show you an example where I, I am using uh, Bitbucket to basically deploy a website so basically if you have it could be it, it need not to be a it need not to be a simple html static website you can actually do a lot of wonderful things with pipelines and uh, in this example i thought i'll probably share with you how i use bitbucket to manage one of my website which is uh, basically a simple html css javascript web, script based website and uh, uh, what this is doing whenever I, whenever there is a new commit to master branch, it will trigger this pipeline to basically deploy something on production. And there are a lot of ways of, ways of doing it. But in this example, what we are going to do, we are just going to do it using simple uh, SCP command. And uh, Bitbucket can actually help you with all, the, all this. So basically, if you look here, this is my folder where I do have my you know, website basically this index.html file and on the right hand side you can see some pipelines actually fail uh, or maybe uh, successfully built so basically what happens whenever so there is a there is one file called bitbucket hyphen pipelines dot yml and this file whenever you uh, want any changes or any commits to be uh, pushed to your production or maybe test environment you can actually configure your pipeline and uh, my use case is very simple, but I think when you when you learn how to do simple things, you can then of course move on to doing something a bit more advanced. So if if I show you my pipeline or this this file basically, so this is a file, and if you look at the content of the file, it is basically one template. So basically, when you try to configure uh, Bitbucket pipelines, you will have an option to. Uh, basically use uh, some templates or different type of deployments that you can do. In this example, I'm using uh, nothing but uh, simple uh, SCP deploy. So there is one uh, pipe which you will get with your uh, uh, with your uh, template in Bitbucket. And there are a lot of those templates. You can actually take a look at it and, and you can do a lot of wonderful things, by the way, with it. And if you look here, all we're doing is uh, we are basically specifying the remote uh, of course, you have to specify your SSH username, SSH, uh, and of course your host name, you know, let us say IP address of your server. And uh, on that server, what is your uh, path? For example, this could be a path to your 
maybe HTML website, and uh, and that is it. So this this example is going to work where whenever you commit anything to your uh, to your uh, main branch, it will basically deploy those changes. It will build it for you, and it will then deploy it to your uh, uh, remote host. So for this to work, there are few few things that I thought I'll probably talk about and share. So once you configure this, the next thing that you have to do is you have to basically let your Bitbucket know where your server is, and like where to reach, or basically, uh, th for example, this IP address is, uh, of course, right now it says 127, which is, of course, just an example, but it is actually an IP address to your uh, host, your remote host. And what you need to do is you need to basically uh, go to the repository settings, and then uh, you then need to go to, I'll just uh, increase the size of my window, my webcam window, because I want to hide my SSH token. And when you when you go to the repository settings, you can then click on the, uh, basically this option called SSH keys. So if you click on this, you un under pipelines. So under pipelines, you have something called SSH, SSH keys. And this is where you can see that uh, there is uh, an option. So you, if you do it for the very first time, you will get a button. So there will be a button called generate SSH keys. It, it will generate the keys for you. And uh, what you need to do, you need to then uh, basically go to your remote server and make sure on the remote server you copy this uh, key here, basically the public key, and you cop paste it to, to your, there's a file called authorized underscore keys. So just paste it there, number one. Number two, you also have to ensure that, uh, so there there is the one, uh, I'll just try to do it very carefully. So there is something called as a known uh, host where you need to basically enter the, um, so basically you need to enter the, um, the IP address of your host name. And uh, when you enter the IP address of your host name, you then need to click on the button. There's a, there's a button called fetch. Let me try to show you. I'll just uh, bring in one, uh, one, 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 uh, basically there is an option here. So if you look here, there is a, there, there is this host address. So if you specify the whole, like if you basically copy your uh, uh, IP address here, and if you click on the fetch button, it will actually bring something. I don't know what this host f fingerprinted. I have no idea. But this will basically then uh, uh, let you can let let you basically I mean basically what we are doing we are doing uh, we are basically telling Bitbucket that okay this is my host my my Linux server and uh, you need you need these keys to be able to copy or so that your Bitbucket can uh, uh, can can uh, connect to it. Now this might not work for the very first time and uh, I mean it should work and this is what I thought I'll probably share because you might encounter errors like where uh, your, for example, when you when you click on the build, when you look at the builds, uh, basically you will see all the. For for example, this build was successful, but there might be some builds that uh, will fail. And if you if you look at uh, one of the build here, it will tell you the exact uh, error, or it will show you the exact error. And this error might be something to do with the keys, or it might be something to do with the the known host. So basically what I have shown you today is, uh, I mean the steps, you have to of course uh, generate the keys, make sure you copy a public key to your Linux server, and then make sure you fetch your uh, uh, fingerprint. I mean, you have to do it on Bitbucket. And then of course your, your public key should be there in the authorized key file. And once you do this, and if you look at the pipeline file, uh, basically this uh, file uh, will, I just uh, uh, showed you my key. Don't worry about it. I'll just uh, generate a new one. And uh, once you, okay, let me just show you. What, anyway, so this is my public key, which is on uh, my my uh, server, which of course I copied to my server. And uh, I, uh, apart from this, I just need, needed to, because of, after copying this public key to my server, 
and making sure that it is uh, basically in the authorized underscore keys. It didn't work. I had to basically also click on the fetch button here to generate fingerprint. Uh, I guess Bitbucket is uh, looking for that for to be able to make a connection. And that is it, to be honest. It, it works nicely. The moment you uh, set up this, it worked for me and it was basically able to copy the files to the server whenever there is a comment. You can also trigger it manually, like these builds. So you can actually click on the Run Pipeline button. You can then select Master here, and then you can select the branch and click on the button here. That is it. So this is quite useful. And it's, it's, I mean, of course, this is just one example. You can, of course, do a lot of other things if you want, but this uh, will... This is like a starting thing that you have to do to set up your pipe man. And uh, uh, there's a limitation, by the way, if you look if you look at the usage. So you, you will basically get some free minutes. And I, I'm i using a free version. Uh, I don't really have the paid plan, but um, this, the way it works, you have similar concept on uh, GitLab. On GitLab, of course, I do maintain one of my, a couple of my blogs simple blocks, like HTML based blocks, which I manage using org mode for free. And uh, doing it on GitLab is very simple because you don't have, you don't really have to worry about these, uh, you know, keys, because GitLab will also host it for you. So you just need to configure the pipeline, which so they will give you a, like a template, similar template, by the way. Uh, but of course, if you want to do it on Bitbucket, then now you know how to do it. And that is it. I thought I'll probably share it with everyone. And uh, you may you you maybe uh, you maybe if you're looking for for a way to deploy. I mean, of course, I'm doing it on my own server, uh, my own Linux server, and it is of course very convenient. Uh, and and I'm thinking maybe I should make more videos on Bitbucket because why not? I, I use it myself, and uh, these things are quite useful. So now I think we are going into the domain of DevOps. Continuous integration, continuous improvement, CI/CD pipeline. So this is this is interesting. I don't really do a lot of things to be honest with these things uh, because my main focus is definitely on Jira. But I use bits and pieces of uh, these features for my own personal projects, and uh, I will definitely share if I have anything interesting or useful. All right, that is it. That is it for today. Bye bye.